What's good everyone, Shirt here bringing you guys another episode of my deck review. The deck we're going to be reviewing today is Strategist of the Necros is Satella Knights. So, last time what I did is I sorted out the deck and then I dueled with it. That I, I shouldn't have done that, I should have dueled with it to see how good his version was and then... Or her version, which I doubt, but yeah, his or her version to see how good it is and then sort it out. So that was a mistake from me, sorry about that, luckily nobody noticed, but we'll go over his deck profile and then we'll, um, <clears throat> sorry, just got a bit of a cough, uh, we'll go over, we'll go into the duels against Fluffles on the AI, because that's like the only deck the AI plays properly. Uh, free Uncle Ai, free Altair, free Deneb, uh, one Alsham, for some reason, two Vega, Vela. Uh, reinforcement of the army. I'll get my views after. Uh, soul charge, upstart, free duality, two skybridge, uh, free genesis, uh, one storming, one bottomless, one quaking, two oasis, three fiendish chain, uh, one unending uh, fun, uh, three call of the haunted, three stellar nova alpha, one solemn morning, and then we've got diamond, two batlamius, or vatlamius, I think it was in the OCG, um, one delta rose. Uh, one Dark Rebellion, one Kenogoran, or however you pronounce that, what is it? Kenogorgon, Kenogorgon, that's it. Uh, three copies of Triver, uh, Heartland Draco, uh, shout outs to Dragon Duels in uh, the North American WCQ, uh, the kid. I uh, don't know what his name was, but he beat as uh, Pure Zoo with his uh, Pendulum Magician Zoo or whatever he was playing. It was uh, pen it was maybe Performer Power Magician Zoo or something like that, but he won because of this card. So shout outs to him and shout outs to uh, Hotline Draco. Uh, one Castell, what whatever I just did there, swapped him around for some reason. Uh, if they go back. Oh, just click sort. Uh, one Abyss Dweller, one Gaga -ga -ga Cowboy, uh, 86 because it's broken when you saw charge back 5 Stella uh, Knights, and then Rhapsody and Berserk. So we're going to go over the, uh, go into the duel straight away, and then I'm going to review the deck. So just against AI Fluffles, we might do like 2 free games just to see how it works. Uh, Stella Knights going first naturally. Uh, not the best idea to go first against Fluffles, but this deck always goes first. So we got Vega, Deneb, Skybridge, and uh, Genesis. So that's not horrible. Definitely not horrible at all. Um, unfortunately, normally you want to just get like a search of Deneb and set load a back row to go into uh, next turn. But it seems like we've got Vega and Deneb, so we might have to uh, commit some stuff to the bottom. We haven't got a... Um, we haven't got... Uh, mm -hmm. What do you call it? Phones just to uh, give a message. We haven't got a um, can't even think right now. Oh, uh, Stella Nova Alpha. That's what we haven't got. So um, set our Oasis of Dragon Souls, set Genesis, and set Skybridge, and then I think that's it. Making a rank four. Well, we could make Dweller if we want to be mean. I think we're gonna make Dweller because the thing is, like, uh, going first, the only rank four that's really good. Is Dweller and then or Kenagoran, but like we haven't got anything else. We'll put Dweller. We know we're playing against Fluffles, but even if it was me, I would just put Dweller down anyways because you want to get your uh, ten lights into the graveyard. We'd like to eat Dweller straight away because why not? But uh, we kind of we shouldn't have really set uh, Skybridge and Genesis. But what can you do? Got a waste of space down as well. There's Dog. Uh, then he searches Bear. Just standard Fluffle bait. Uh, Fluffle um. Plays, bays, for bays, for plays. Uh, toy vendor. Yeah, sorry if I'm not paying much attention. I'm just looking at one of the oh, one of the uh, messages on one of my videos because I'll give you a shout out. Cause whenever messages pop up on my phone when I'm doing videos, I give the guy a shout out. So Jason Ortiz, you said, yeah, the band vanity is emptiness. Now I have to protect fiend um, and ruler better. Oh well, I hope they get some crazy decks to try good luck uh, with your channel. So thank you, Jason. I think that was in reference. Um, to uh, vanity, your vanity deck, but vanity's emptiness is cancer, and that thing definitely doesn't deserve to come back. The fact that you can turn it off is what made it broken. Sorry, I just left that pause for a bit. And crap, he did that. So <laughs> I'm gonna have to just use the oasis. Tiger's not really that good. I sorry, Tiger's really good. What am I saying? Tiger is really good. So uh, European rules get our Vega. So we can make. Um, what, 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 you call, what do you call him? Uh, Triver to bounce back everything on the field. Because we used Dweller, he couldn't go into extensive plays. But there's Alpha, one turn too late. Naturally, just like that, Maxi always comes in on your second turn as your top deck after they've done a full zoo combo. Uh, Altair for Dinair, but I'm not justifying Maxi. Maxi is one of the cards that needs to be at free or needs to be gone from the game because it's too sacky at one. 
uh, and it's fair at free because everybody has access to it. But it's, in a way, it might uh, be seen as unfair because of um, what do you call it? Because meta decks abuse it as well. Like, it's good against meta decks, but then meta decks can use it as well against other meta decks, and that's what makes it broken. Uh, just a need altar there. I'm probably just going to do one do with this deck and then uh, then rate it. So I don't think there's any point of using Skybridge. It's still why I personally don't really like Skybridge. I used to play it, and I was just like, you don't need it. Uh, well, Trevor. Yeah, Trevor, that's what we're gonna do. You could go back and just discard a card for Trevor, but like, why do I want to discard a card? I'd just rather use one of the monsters on the field. Obviously, kick something out of his hand, or we'll chuck to death into the graveyard. Take uh, Fright for Reborn out of his hand. That was the card that was in. Uh, we got Alpha as well for next turn. But that was the card that was in. What's the deck? Um. Oh, I already forgot what it was. Oh no, sorry, not the deck. Uh, Fright for Reborn was the card that was in. Um, uh, I dropped something. Was in the um, Dimension Guardian set instead of uh, Fright for Patchwork. Seriously, I need to um, get my head in the game a little bit more. Oh, and he draws the wings. Sacked. So there's Octo. Uh, alpha now. Nah, we'll, we'll, if like anything important comes out, we might Alpha. The diamond's really good. I personally really love Diamond as a card, it really like killed BA back in the day, I didn't use Space Star Knights, but watching over some old duels from like previous YCSs and stuff is really funny. So there's a release the Kraken, watch Clash of Titans guys, it's funny. Uh, uh, that uh, um, thing I just said, release the Kraken is what, oh god, we have to negate that, is what somebody said in there and it applies really well to uh, Fright for Kraken. So you draw a card, Fright for Fusion for Wolf. Fight for reborn for wings in the graveyard. How many attacks does Wolf have? Oh, luckily we don't die yet. Um, we drew Alsham. Uh, decent, I guess. Don't. Um, I'm gonna explain why I don't like this in a minute. No, no need for Skybridge. Alsham can burn for a thousand. Then we'll Skybridge it out. Scarbridge feels like a neg one sometimes if you don't get an ebb and sometimes you need to get... I don't know, I don't really like it. Um, because it shuffles it back rather than send it to the grave, I'll get our third copy of Alter. But um, I think if we uh, go into like Dark Rebellion or something... Um, oh, we can only some Stellar Knights. Uh, this is why I don't... This is why Stellar Knights have got issues because they're really slow. Uh, we got Oasis face down so hopefully we don't die because we'll have Deltrus. Uh, we'll go in Trivia or Deltrus. Trevor's good to snipe a card out of hand, I guess. We'll use the second Trevor. I was uh, before this. I was thinking, why is he playing triple Trevor? And I realized that maybe it isn't the worst. Oh, we just snap the wing out, wings out of his hand. Possibly the worst thing to snap. So uh, there we go. If we hadn't didn't have the wolf on board, we would have probably won that. So there's dog. Dog for bear. Don't even need to explain this. Everybody uses to snap knows how this works. You just uh, do a load of things until you get like three fusions on the field. Basically zoo, but for fusions. And not plusing as hard as zoo. Sluffers are a good deck, don't get me wrong, but um, Link format, I don't see. Uh, they, they're they they're playable because Sabretooth keeps them alive, but I just feel sorry because they, they are still haven't got patchwork and it's going into Link format, so people didn't get to play the deck at its full potential. So here we go, you can tell this deck is good, mm. this is the AI play in it. Got another message, um, Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything, Channel Update, Copyright Strikes, Receive Future Plans. Oh, I really love Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything's channel, I need to... Um... Oh, Fright for Leo, bloody hell, haven't seen that in a while. Oh god, uh, Trevor's dead. And we lose that duel because he burned us. Well, unlucky. So with this deck, personally, I think... It, I think it's being built as a budget version, but the point of this, um, the point of, what, what am I trying to say? The point of this series is to kind of make decks as playable as possible. Now, even though I understand and I can, like, empathize with the fact that it is a budget deck, it's not very good idea to send budget decks into me if this is a budget deck. If it, I doubt anybody would build a Satellanite deck this bad. Sorry, Strange the Necros, I'm really sorry, but um, I have to speak the truth. So basically, in my opinion, we really need to sort out this deck because um, Alsham's unneeded, 
the random veiler's not even that good. Like, if you're going to put a random veiler in there, at least put some synchros. Uh, bottomless isn't needed because you're not playing Rafflesia. Uh, if you are playing Rafflesia, then we could bump up the tower, uh, tra uh, trap holes. A uh, Genesis um, is good. Maybe at one, not two, not three, definitely not three. Skybridge isn't very good. Like, even though Shunsuke won the uh, World Championships a couple years ago using this card, uh, and it did, like, allow him to gain momentum and stuff, I don't think in today's Yu-Gi-Oh! is very good. Uh, the... Um, Without Card of Demise, uh, and that's another issue. I know some people don't like Card of Demise, but in my opinion, that really sorts it out. So... Uh, let's uh, rip into this deck and sort it out. And then the double Vega, I don't really understand that. Uh, Vega, like, an Uncle I, I would cut down to two and put Vega up to three, in my opinion. Uh, so if we cut Alsham, first of all, cut one an Uncle I and put in a Vega. Then, I, I, it may look like I'm absolutely destroying this deck, but, because, but I'm really sorry. This is just how what I'm going to have to do. So I just cut both Sky Bridges and two Genesises. Genesises. <laughs> Um, extra deck, as for extra deck, it's decent, the Utopia package excluded isn't good. Like, another thing is Fiendish Chain. In my opinion, you should just play Solemn Strike, but I can see it has benefits with Triver, but then Solemn Strike out over, or like, kind of, like, takes that away because with, um, Strike, it's a counter trap card, plus it's gonna get special summon, so, like, against a Pendulum deck or something, this is gonna find it really hard to play. Uh, I, the one Quaking I don't like is Stellanite, even though Trivers gonna can bounce everything back, it's much better just to put everything back in your, ha your opponent's hand with Storming, rather than leave it on the field and, like, um, with uh, Quaking, because it can become problematic if you don't have access to Triver and you just wanna finish, him off, finish them off with your uh, Satellanites. Uh, so, the away, I think the Call of the Haunted and Oasis ratio is fine to Oasis 3 Call of the Haunted. I wouldn't bump it up to 3. Uh, you can play 3. There's no problem with playing 3. It's just that it's some um, kind of <coughs> unnecessary. Uh, the <coughs> Eternal Nightmare isn't really needed either. Like, the one Eternal Nightmare is kind of odd. So, if we cut the Eternal Nightmare... And then we put in our Sun Strike. Look, I know this is supposed to be a budget deck and it's made as a budget deck, but the way we do decks on this channel is make them as good as uh, good as possible. So, like, that's how deck reviews are. So please, no hate. Um, so free uh, card demise, free duality. Uh, then the upstart is decent for 39 cards. Consistency, I guess. Roll obviously. Oh yeah, the random veil is not good. You don't want to play hand traps when you play card demise. You could just sack card of demise and put in like hand traps but card demise is much better because it can get you access into your traps much easier um I, i'm even considering putting uh storming storming to free possibly because like just clearing opponents board and uh, the fact that battle traps are barely even played is um just i personally think drowning would be a nice addition uh can't even spell drowning but we'll put in drowning um i'm just considering Two drowning and two storming, is that excessive? To an extent, I guess it is ex excessive. If we play one storming and two drowning, that makes a total of uh, three extremely like potent mirror forces compared to Quaking, because Quaking puts everything face down. Quaking's better in decks like Blue Eyes, and maybe not Blue Eyes, because Blue Eyes don't play traps, but like maybe the Dinosaur deck, because Ultimate Conductor can destroy stuff. Basically, decks that can bust out a lot of powerful monsters, and like maybe Chaos Max as well, that's, that's why I was there. So two drowning, one storming, because drowning is really good, because you can distribute off like your Xyz, your Trivial or something after using it. Uh, with Alpha, then maybe get another Stellar Knight, and obviously they'll try and destroy that. And then Drowning can just be an uh, extreme blowout. Plus, sometimes you can bet you can't have access to your Satellar Knights, or you don't want to summon your Satellar Knights. So, you could just decide to uh, set this and uh, leave it at that because if they don't get rid of it, shuffling back all their monsters into the deck is um, amazing. So, I'm just thinking of other things I can put in here. Like, I'm going to check my uh, Satellar Knight profile because basically I build all my decks as standard as possible, like all the relevant decks that are good. Uh, torrential is good in there. Yeah, torrential could be a playable. Desires. How did I forget about that? Can't believe I forgot about uh, desires. Do I only play one and uncle in that build? Wow, not the best build. Not even mine's the best build, I guess. No, two and uncle I three. A uh, two Vega. Yeah, I play two Vega. Yeah, so maybe. Uh, yeah, I guess two Vega is understandable. Because you want to play a 10 monster count and 2 and Uncle I, 2 Vega. Yeah, I think I think that's good. I think the fact that he had 2 Vega. So sorry for that. 
Um, I just uh, think uh, Desires is really good in it, even though you can have a potential of banishing your Satanonite, like, uh, you can do Desires afterwards, or it can just get you into trance much easier, so Desires is good. Uh, I'm going to keep the extra deck the same, except include the Utopia thing. So basically, Triple Triver is kind of necessary. Well, Ken Goran's good, um, but uh, we'll cut Cowboy and Ken Goran to put Utopia stuff in. I'll tell you the rating for the deck in a minute. Um, so Utopia, because this is just a universal problem solver. Uh, you need out cards like Crystal Ink because they're really good against this deck. I know Storming works against it, but still, like you want to out it as quickly as possible rather than life traps because um, sometimes Denko is sided in against uh, Stellar Knights and you, you know the drill. Um, with one Genesis, um, traps are pretty. Uh, uh, Becoming uh, more relevant, I guess. Uh, traps aren't re uh, what I mean is traps traps aren't relevant because going into link format, a lot of decks are more combo based, so they kind of avoid playing traps like like Star Grills, for example, and like uh, even like the True King Dino deck uh, barely ever played any traps. It still doesn't really play any traps. Some people decide to play Scolding, but that's it. So I think one Genesis is just about enough to keep in the deck. I don't think any more back row removal is necessary. I did start hating on the bottomless, didn't I, by saying it's not really needed so we'll cut the bottom less torrential can go in because uh sometimes like be able to wipe your bonds board and send a trip to the graveyard to plus off that by getting into them is really good um i personally think uh, because of today's meta dark holes and regekis are necessary so i'll put regeki in and then cut one more card look once again i repeat i know this could have potentially been a budget deck but as I said, it has to be the most. So uh, potentially the card we can cut is I just put torrential. I said it's really good, but um, sometimes like if you draw it late game, it's not the best. Whereas a lot of these other traps are always going to be good. So we'll leave torrential out and we'll leave the deck like this because uh, uh, Talonites really kind of find it uh, hard to out boards. They like they they out boards with cards like Triver, but that was good in last a uh, couple of years ago's meta because decks like Necros didn't really use uh, that many traps. BA did use some. But not as much as maybe decks like Klee, they had problems against Klee's because it was kind of a trap matchup. But against decks like Necros, which was the best deck, that's what kind of uh, made Satellanites good. The fact that Necros were the best deck and Necros didn't play traps. And Satellanites could play so many traps and gain advantage from there and not uh, their opponent out with mistake. So he did build a side deck that I don't really care. Like, I never really cared about the side deck. I sorted it out for the other guy a bit. But side deck doesn't matter, you don't have to send it in with a side deck. So strategies and Necros, thank you for sending in your profile. I'm going to just show you a mock duel with the new deck against Fluffles, AI of course, and then I'll, uh, basically your, the rating for your deck is 4 out of 10, I gave the other guy 5 out of 10 and I put, I'm going to give you 4 out of 10 because the deck was playable, but um, oh, bloody hell, we opened up a double call that I wanted, not the best, not the best, uh, if we, we got the strike, strike's really good against like Tiger, but if we like normal summon, special summon dweller. Like, I know I'm playing against Fluffuzzle, but technically, technically, this is game two. So let's just put Dweller on board anyways. This is, I'm just trying to show you what it can do. Like, the, the, it wasn't the best opening hand here, but still. We had access to one rank four and, like, uh, double color volunteered. So basically, I'm just trying to stop myself from getting OTK'd right now. We didn't have access to Deneb, which kind of sucks. We didn't get Demise or Duality, which never really comes up, actually. It's pretty odd that we happen to draw into so much. So he's going to get the Vendor, and then probably ditch Wings, but he can't use Wings Effect. Yeah, Octoburst, or Octo in the OCG. So there's a uh, Poly for Sheep. Yep, that's it. Poly, summoning Sabertooth. Sabertooth's going to use Undestructible to battle all card effects. Damn. So if even if we strike it, his effects will just be negated rather than destroy it. But it, like it's only a twenty-eight hundred like vanilla. There's no point of striking it just to stop it. Because all it got was sheep, and sheep's not the uh, most annoying thing in the world. So hopefully we'll get a oh, bloody house turn like Genesis. Uh, we can just call the haunted doll for Altair. Special summon Vega. We can go straight into Trivia as well, which I think is pretty good. We can put a dweller back as well and put a call of the wanted back. Please don't save uh, Battling Yesterday's discard one card. Yeah, we don't need the Genesis. No, we don't want to strike our own monster, thank you very much. Uh, just detach, it doesn't matter what we detach. Um, oh god, only Delphus, why? 
That's odd. What you did that to turn into a special one? Light turning out master from using this card. Is that a glitch or something? I don't understand why we can't summon a Triver. Maybe it's because we call the Haunted for Abyss Dweller. You can't special summon other ones except Talon Knight. So basically, we summoned Dweller, which was a mistake. So I'm just gonna like carry on playing, but like, oh. Yeah, we can't even destroy the save room. Yeah, I'm just going to uh, sort that out because I didn't realise that. So, that was a short misplay, so we'll just re redo the deck because like, I barely ever played Hella Knights. Never even knew that. So, right, hopefully we'll draw okay. Right, this is okay. This is what you kind of want to open up with. The Dark Call is good. Uh, Call of the Haunted, Card of Demise, and Hella Knight Genesis. So, Card of Demise because we can normal summon a like dump something, draw like a couple cards. Set this. Set this. Normal summon an Uncle uh, send the Neb to Graveyard and then play Card of Demise to draw two, set Duality, set this, and then in turn discarding our Altair. So Galaxy Cyclone snipes out the Duality, that's fine. Fluffle Dogs there, um, that's fine as well. So for Fluffle Bear, that's also fine. Oh, it's really annoying when you have responses when they're doing so much stuff on YGO Pro. But then, in real life, everybody plays extremely slow as well. Me as well, sometimes, when I'm trying to, like, out -boss. When I'm trying to out -boss, that's when I play slow. When I'm making a board, I don't play slow. Because out a board just takes too much effort. When Especially when you're like, oh, they're going to they're possibly negate this. Let's try and bluff this. It takes a lot of thought process when you are um, out on a board. So, obviously, he does the standard of fluff or misplay with that. That's the only thing that AI does wrong. Fuses too many monsters. But this time, it wasn't the worst, because, oh, crap. Patchwork. <laughs> So here comes another saber too. Patrick is such a good card, seriously. I feel sorry for fluffle players. Somebody I know really likes fluffles. Oh, damn tiger. You tried to pop both oasises. So we'll just get uh, Deneb. And we'll get Altair. Uh, they were both going to be popped anyway, so it didn't matter what order we did that in. Oh, we can use Altair's effect. That's clever. That's actually clever, so we'll use Deneb's effect um, to get an old test, and then we'll special summon Deneb. But we won't get in the search again, but still, that's pretty cool. Oh, Vega, damn, I clicked on Vega instead of old test. that's fine now. We got Dark Hole, Indestructible, damn. So, basically, hopefully we'll do old test. Yes! Oh my god, we actually sacked him. Same with two Indestructible, then Sheep comes back, but that's fine. Uh, Vega, old test, Deneb, Triver. <laughs> that is so broken. <laughs> Vega, Alter, Deneb, search Alter. See, th this is the bread and butter. Vega, Alter, Deneb, Vega, Alter, Deneb, Vega, Alter, Deneb. That's why I don't like it. That's why I prefer Necro much better. But obviously, there's some of the, uh, some of you guys out there that love this deck. I personally kind of like it. I was really annoyed when it uh, when Necros lost to it. Galileo, I think his name was, lost to Shunsuke when he was playing Necros. But it happens. We can snipe another card out of his hand. Toy Vendor, oh! We had to snipe the wrong one, Diamond. Right, basically, we're sitting on Diamond. The fact that we actually drew Altair is funny because... So he just got... He just said yes. So, Altair... Deneb... Oh, uh, De oh Deneb's uh, underneath that. So we'll get uh, an Uncle Eye. Um, we can't use this effect because we've got no Talon Knights left in deck, apparently. Uh, then we're just going to, like... Into a... Rhapsody and Berserk. Just equip it to diamond. Now we're going to battling. Yes, makes all monsters on the field dark. Yeah, this this card combo is broken because all their monsters are dark, and then diamond stops it, stops them from using dark monsters' effects. Stop them from using dark monsters' effects. So he's just some normal summons dog. So we use solemn warning on that. Sorry about uh, the background noise this time. And then Satan and I can sell a diamond attacks for game. So there you go, there's my version of the deck. I guess it is kind of better. <laughs> Obviously it's better. I put in all these expensive cards. But thank you guys for watching. 4 out of 10 rating. Sorry, I know it's supposed to be a budget deck. But that's how you make this series. I have to be fair to everybody. I recommend... Oh, I just realised 10 monsters, 15 spells, 15 trials. Pretty cool. Um, I just have to be fair to everybody and rate their decks equally. Rather than be like, oh, this guy's is budget. Or this guy's isn't. So thank you guys for watching. This has been Sure at Peace.